something has been lost In a distant epoch In a distant epoch Something ancient and modern A future forgotten. forgotten. So we go towards something else. A boundless eternal. Something else. A crucial part. It is missing. We must find it. We must find it. Yeah, 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 yeah. talk about. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about the Auto Destiny and it relates back to one of my favorite artists, um, Sun Ra. Some call him the godfather of Afrofuturism. Um, for me, he's probably the first Afrofuturist and his work covers the ancient the present and the modern. And all of those things for me, the beginning, middle and end relate to destiny and destination and where we're going. And his thing of an auto destiny or an alternative path was about how we use the auto destiny to bring us to other spaces. Um, so if we think about destiny through the lens of the past and the present, they can both exist simultaneously. So. The past can be in the present, and the past can be in the future. The future can be in the past, the future can be in the present. It all depends on where your perspective is at a given point in time. One of the things that I really admired about Sun Ra was the way that he used costume, and he combined space age kind of philosophy, space age clothes with also ancient Egyptian mythology and items. And he incorporated all of this into a picture, a picture of what it could be, particularly for what black Americans could be. Um, and during the time which he was around, he started in the 1930s and moved all the way through to the 19, 1980s, 1989 when he died. He started in the era where Louis Armstrong and Fletcher Henderson were around, but yet still he was the first musician to use a Moog synthesizer in his music, to use an electric piano, and really pioneered the use of these things within jazz, but really beyond jazz, going into the diaspora and picking up on the rhythms, all of the musicians in his bands would play instruments as well, um, and would play drums as well as their kind of main instruments. And this was really interesting for me because his vision of music was beyond just the performance or the idea. His vision of music was about how it was used to reimagine possibilities. And that for me is the most interesting thing, um, where our potentials are and how do you use creativity to imagine a different destiny or a different space, uh, something which is unknown. He would call it the impossible sometimes. And through this journey, 
I'll talk to you about my own destiny or my own destinies. So I started playing music when I was probably 16 years old, which is late for some. And when I started playing, I had a music teacher. And it was uh, during A-levels. And he said, you're never going to become a professional musician because you started too late compared to all of these other people, right? Um, <laughs> exactly. But I was just like ignorant. I was hard-headed. But maybe I wasn't. I was enlightened. One of the two, but it doesn't really matter if I was ignorant or enlightened. What matters is the decision that I made, which was I am going to do this, no matter what this person says. <laughs> um, and through that journey of, of being dedicated towards it, I found myself practicing for about six hours, 10 hours a day. I think that was the goal. I read stories about great musicians like John Coltrane and how they practice for 10, 12, 13, 14 hours. And I was like, I'm gonna do this. I, had a, I took a year out, so before, before I would go to university to try and do this, to practice all of these hours on a daily basis. And it ended up with me ending up going to Trinity College of Music, which is probably one of the top conservatoires in this country. <laughs> but upon getting there and staying there for a couple of years, I found myself being restricted by the ideas that were in this space. So my first destiny took me to the point of becoming a saxophone player. And my dream was, I'm going to become the best saxophone player ever, right? That's what you do when you're young. Um, but the second destiny actually came to me when I was playing in a place called Passing Clouds in Dalston, which has unfortunately been shut down. But it was an amazing space because on Sundays, um, they had jam sessions. And on these jam sessions, there were a lot of West African musicians. And coming from the Caribbean diaspora, you know, to Grenadian St. Lucian par parents. And there's a disconnection between um, your ancestral legacy being in that situation. You don't necessarily know where some of the rhythms that are being played come from. You don't know where some of the ideas come from. And meeting these West African musicians was like my, my second education. So this was my second destiny, or my second alter destiny. Um, and this took me through a path of reconnecting with history, um, through music, and it was something I didn't anticipate. And again, this goes back to the idea of the past, present, and future changing and something which is impossible because my first destiny, I thought that I'm going to be a saxophone player. This destiny, I'm um, learning about ancient Malian traditions and understanding that music plays more of a role in society um, than it does in, I guess, generally in the Western world. So music um, can be used um, as the means of telling stories of oral history. Um, it also is used to resolve disputes. The, um, the Jalis or the Griots would get called into families to help them resolve their disputes because they knew from their family name the lineage of that person and where they came from. And that for me, coming from the Caribbean, was like, I didn't have this. So in my second reality, I started living this, or I started thinking about how I was going to use these concepts in the present and how to apply them within 21st century. And that brings me on to the third destiny. So the third destiny is probably the one that I'm in now. Um, I've learned a lot of, you know, from these musicians in my second destiny. And this third destiny really is a place where you start imagining how these things are reapplied in the present tense. So we've got you know, this digital age, digital technology, you've got mobile phones. If you were to take the proverb of how do you raise um, the ancient African pro proverb that to raise a child, it takes a village. How does that apply in the 21st century when we've got mobile phones and it's our main means of communication? You're gonna have to compete with Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat and all of these things as parents, um, or as a community, or as a group, and ideas are shared across vast amounts of spaces and can be transferred from one country to another, and they influence the way we think. So the current phase is about how do you link your physical community to your online community, and how do you use digital technology to create online communities within the digital age? Um, 
at one point in time, we thought that planes were not going to fly at one point in time in human history. They did, we didn't think man was going to fly. Another point in time, we thought, especially from the Caribbean, there is never going to be a black president of America. But as history has now been written, we have this evidence. So people might think we won't go to Mars, but Elon Musk is building spaceships that are intending for people to go to Mars. I think one of the women that's going to be on it might be Sudanese. Um, again, with AI and how does that interface within our future world. I think thinking about those things and thinking about those possibilities in the present, very crucial. And how does that reply to creative practice? And that's the really interesting thing, which is I think creativity is not just about playing an instrument. It's not just about creating music or it's about creating a philosophy or an identity, a world identity. And I think musicians like Sun Ra, um, other musicians like Fela Kuti, another one of my inspirations, they created ideologies. They weren't just creators of sound. And that brings you back to the idea of my, in my second destiny where you were talking about the Greer and the Jali tradition. So the idea is how do we use this in the present? So I have set up a group, and you know, I've got these amazing musicians here with me, Leela and Tile, as well as a <laughs> group of other younger musicians um, where we all gather together to create pieces and it references the past, the present, and the future from the African diaspora. So we will look at you know, ancient Malian rhythms and the societies there. We'll also look at grime and broken beat, things that are contemporary, and then we'll imagine what that looks like in the future. So some of this is an experiment and some of this is the unknown. And this brings me back to kind of finishing. Um, Sun Ra would say you have to start, you start at the past and the present and the future and all the things that you know then you have to go to infinity. When you get to infinity, you need to go beyond infinity to something which is completely impossible. And through my different destinies, each stage I couldn't see before I got to it. Each stage there was something which was impossible, which I could not foresee happening. And if we spend time thinking about building the realities that we want to see, maybe instead of always focusing on the problems or the limitations that it takes, or the limitations in front of us that stop us from achieving maybe our goals or even goals that we don't even know that we might want to achieve in the future, you go far beyond what you think your potential is and where you can go. So if I listen to that advice when I was 16 years old, you're not gonna become a musician. And I listened to that and I absorbed that, then I don't think half of the things that came afterwards would even have time to appear. And those things were impossible at that age. So me being, I'm not going to tell you my age, <laughs> older, see that um, these things are incredibly important. So to finish, I'm going to play a tune called The Mystery. It's inspired by Sun Ra, as this is, I guess, about Sun Ra and Afrofuturism. It's called The Mystery. And it's all about where we can go from here in the present. Thank you. The mysteries are only oh, are only oh. The turning point is almost here. It's almost here. Darkness everywhere. Around the globe. Go now to the mystery. Go now beyond what we see. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Many people cannot see. They cannot see. And those who see have no light. Have no light. So I went to find Uncle Ra Uncle Ra And this is what he told me He told me Go on out to the mystery Go on out Beyond what we see Go on out Go now Go on out Go now Go to the Go Mystery Go to the Go Mystery
mystery to the mystery to the mystery What we see, go now, go now, go now. The mystery exists in ideas, in our things, in our dreams. The myth. The myth, its potentials are unlimited. Thank, Thank you. you.